Hey guys, welcome to this quick uh, beginner's tutorial about the card 3D and uh, image plane. So an image plane, uh, this is just a name that someone gave it, but this is a, a gizmo or a tool set available on Nukepedia that essentially utilizes the card 3D in Nuke. So it's using this uh, card, but essentially what it's doing is uh, speeding up the process of using this a little bit. So a few months ago, I made a tutorial about how to stick color corrections to CG scenes using ST maps and stuff like that. And that's a more advanced technique of doing a similar effect to what we're gonna talk about here. Um, so if you're more in the beginner range, this is gonna be helpful for you. And uh, this is applicable to live action uh, footage or CG scenes. So you can use this technique in either one. But essentially what we have here is uh, a, a shot I filmed in New Zealand, just kind of zooming in, walking here. And then I have a color correction that I've kind of stuck to this tree and you can see it kind of tracks along there. And uh, yeah, that's basically what it's doing. And it's a very quick way to do things like this. And the reason this is useful is because you can stick color corrections or you can stick elements very quickly and populate a scene without having to you know, go into 3D space and try to figure out how to uh, get this placed here. So these two gizmos, uh, are available in the script. You can download the project file, it just gives you the footage and these. Uh, otherwise, you could just uh, search them on Nukepedia. Uh, the other note we're gonna talk about is uh, called Pixels to Position, which is essentially uh, the same as Points to 3D, if you guys are familiar with this. Uh, if not, uh, that's fine, because we're gonna talk about it. But essentially what it does is, uh, if we have a 3D camera already tracked, it allows us to figure out where different things are in a scene. So for example, where where is this tree? And if we want to figure out the, the 3D point of where this is, we can convert this 2D video and find the 3D point. So that's what the story is about. And uh, yeah, we'll get into it. So essentially, very simple. Um, if you take the image plane node, which is provided here, and we'll grab it. Um, and we'll also grab the camera from the 3D track. I'll just restart this area down here and start it from scratch. So we'll paste the camera and we'll paste, uh, we'll just do a, a rotor shape for an image. And I'll just set it to, we'll leave it at alpha for now. So we're gonna do this as like a color correction. And essentially what we wanna do is if you double click the image plane node, uh, so this is again, like I said, it's a card 3D kind of wrapped up into this tool. And essentially what it's doing, uh, I'll do it first and then kind of explain it. But first you wanna set a reference frame. So let's say we wanna color correct the bottom of this tree. So we'll go to the frame that we're creating the correction on, uh, and it's essentially projecting out from this frame. So uh, frame four. So if I just draw something here, if I wrote a shape uh, very quickly, draw a really basic shape. So that's drawn on frame four, so that's our reference frame. So I'll make sure to set that in the tool, set that to four. And the distance, we don't know the distance yet. So I'll explain that in just a second. So let's just plug that in, see exactly what that's doing first. So plugging the mask input into the image plane, we can grade up and we see that that's happening. Um, so if we start to play through this footage, uh, we see that actually it starts to kind of stick with the scene, but it seems to not be sticking correctly to the tree uh, entirely. And that's because our, three, our distance is not correct. So essentially what we're doing, if we go into 3D space here, is it's taking this card 3D. So if you just imagine, uh, let's just draw it here. I'll just do a uh, draw tool. So if you imagine that uh, this tool creates a card, but it's to the scale of the camera frustum. So if we take and we look at this, so this basically this triangle that's coming out of the camera is the view of where the camera is seeing. And essentially it's creating a card uh, along these corners uh, this is a bad drawing, but it'll it'll work. So uh, this is basically creating a card along these these lines here, and the distance setting. So if you look in the tool, it says distance is our z distance. So uh, basically, uh, how far away whatever we want to kind of project onto is from the camera. So if our tree is somewhere over here, that would be our distance. So we need to figure out how far is that point from our camera. So again, so that card is going to be projected out in this triangle, always scaling to these points, and we can even have some overscan on there, but uh, basically it's just doing that. It's scaling out along the triangle until that uh, distance is achieved. 
So the question you might ask is, okay, well, if you understand that concept, basically we just need to get our roto shape at the correct distance in 3D space. But how do we find the point in 3D space? Um, so one way, uh, which is not the most efficient way, is to look at the uh, point cloud that's generated automatically um, by your camera tracker. So you can see a bunch of points. And this scene is not a great example of where this would be particularly useful because, um, well, you can't really tell where the tree is. And maybe it's the points right here, but uh, it's not the best representation um, just to, due to the nature of how the scene is shaped. So another way to do this would be using uh, this tool. So we need to figure out what 3D uh, point this bottom of the tree is, uh, where the position is. So essentially we could use this tool, which is nukes points to 3D. I'll explain it very briefly, but I'm gonna I'll also explain this tool, which does the exact same thing. Uh, it's just less, less glitchy. So for whatever reason, uh, points to 3D, it's sort of hit or miss. Sometimes I've had great success with it. And sometimes it just doesn't work that great. This scene in particular, or whatever reason, it's not working well with this camera, even though the track seems to be working fine. Uh, sometimes this will not work perfectly, but the way it works is very simple. If you click in the points to 3D, uh, you have three points. It says point A, point B, and point C. So essentially what we're doing is triangulation. And if you guys don't know what triangulation is, I have a video. Um, I'll try to link it in the, in the thing here. Basically explaining what this concept is. But we need to define three points throughout the, the uh, frame range of our video. And it will try to determine, based off of those three positions that we've determined at different times, uh, where a point is. So if I do a fresh points to 3D, I'm not going to run it through because it's not giving me the best result on this particular shot. And I'll show you why. Um, so if we take point A here. So I've just created a new one and we say, okay, so we want to figure out, let's say this little white dot on the bottom of the tree. We set point A to that position at the start of our video and we say set frame. And essentially what we want to do is we want to create these points relatively uh, far from each other in, in terms of time. So you want to not just put all the points that, you know, on, on frame one, two, and three, you want to like go like halfway and then a little bit further so that there's they've kind of traveled uh, a little bit further. So point B, it's about 30 frames in. So we set that, go here, set the position uh, on the dot there, and we'll just say set frame. And don't forget to say set frame, otherwise it just totally doesn't work at all. Um, and then point C, um, and we'll place it there. And essentially what you normally do is you hit calculate and you'll see Sometimes this gives us results that are good and sometimes it doesn't. And that's why I also wanted to bring in this custom gizmo because in this particular instance, uh, for whatever reason, it's not giving the best result. So we'll just run it through and we can see exactly what it's supposed to do. So essentially what it does is it's supposed to tell us a 3D point. So this is the, the 3D point that it's determined. And it's also giving us a 2D track. Um, but this 2D track seems to be off and that's why I've used this custom gizmo, which I, I much prefer this one anyway, it's just much easier. But that's essentially the concept. So now we're gonna do the same exact thing uh, with this tool, but it works a little bit differently. So Pixels 2 Position, it's a custom one. This is again, available right here, you can download it. And basically, same exact concept. Plug in the camera, you plug in the footage, and you notice I've uh, undistorted our footage as well because we want it to, we don't want to work on a distorted footage if we're uh, dealing with a 3D track or um, stuff like that. So just make sure you have the undistorted. And if you don't know where this is coming from, if you're familiar with ca uh, 3D camera tracking, this is automatically created in our uh, setup here. Or you can uh, generate this manually uh, using other methods. So pixels to position, this is a custom no, but Basically, same exact concept. We go to a frame, uh, make sure we have the overlay on. So if I hover over and hit Q, we have overlay on. I'm gonna select the point, but this time there's no uh, point A, point B uh, kind of interface here. You just use your sampling. So if I hold uh, control, you see that little uh, red selector. So I'm just gonna do the same thing and select our point here and say add point. And you see that it's, it's captured that position on frame three. So it's doing the same exact thing we just did. So I'm gonna go forward in time and do the same thing. Sample the same point and say add point. 
and let's just take a look at the node. So immediately you see this node without even having to solve the entire frame range has already determined something and it's much more accurate than our uh, points to 3D. So that's why I prefer this tool in general. It just seems to work uh, more of the time and it's uh, much faster. So even with just two points, it's figured out pretty much perfectly this point in 3D space. So essentially what you do now is you can either export this as a 2D track if you want a 2D track of that area, or you can export an axis, which is a, basically a 3D point space, which will give you something like this. But what we're gonna use it for is really just a reference for where to place our uh, image plane. So if we go back to our image plane setup and we look at where uh, this thing is falling, uh, if I double click the image plane, we can adjust the distance. Let's make sure we have uh, two properties, two, basically more than one property set so we can see them both at the same time. So I wanna make sure that we have this node open in the property panel as well as this one at the same time. And that will allow us to see both of these in 3D. And so essentially uh, we just wanna make that distance sit on top of that pixel uh, or that point rather. So if you just adjust this, you'll see as I use my arrow keys up and down, uh, it's pretty much just shifting the position and we can just line it up with that point. And now we know that this card is sitting right on the tree, at least to that relative to uh, the right side of the tree. We know this tree is not flat by the way. So there's a little bit of um, downsides to this. Like we don't have a 3D geometry that's going to match perfectly, uh, but it is gonna stick pretty dang close. And this can speed up your roto quite quite a lot if you're trying to you know rotoscope or something like this. So we see on this side, it's actually sticking more accurately than it is on this side of the tree. And that's because obviously this is a 3D tree. It's not, uh, it's not a 2D surface, but uh, it still helps you out because you can take the roto shape and you know if you're just trying to roto this real quickly, you can just kind of adjust those points over time. And as that shot plays through, uh, we just saved a lot of work having to uh, do that kind of stuff. So that's pretty much the concept and that's a really uh, beginner method. And um, this tool, it, it's pretty much the same as like proprietary tool that like a lot of studios will have. Um, so it's pretty much the equivalent and it's a very, very common technique. Sometimes if you have a complex shot, you might have hundreds of these uh, being used. So let's just see. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think just just remember that card 3D, it's not running through a scanline render. So it's not, it's not the same as a card uh, doing something like this. You could achieve the same result by doing, if I just copy it real quick here, you could achieve the same exact result that we've done by doing a roto, uh, projecting it. So you do a project 3D and frame holding the camera on the frame that we are projecting from. So we'd say a reference frame is frame four. And then we would have to go here, uh, scale up the card. So if you scale the card, and then we place the card into position, you see it's doing the exact same thing. So this whole setup has basically created the whole thing, but we have all these nodes instead of this one, and we're running it through a scanline render, which is actually rendering out, and it's just a bit heavier. Uh, and if you have a lot of these in your script, it's gonna take longer. So this is just a time saver. That's pretty much what it is. Um, you can also, of course, not just do for color corrections. You could, you could always put uh, some elements or something. If you have some smoke in a scene, um, you know, we could, switch this to a merge instead of a grade. And then we could just you know, scale this down. Uh, and then we could you know, mask, essentially mask the noise. And then we could have an element sitting around that basically area and it, it'll sit around the base of the tree. So that's a very quick way to have that and 3D track it without having to go in and do projections. Um, so that's uh, pretty much it. I'll, I'll chuck the camera up here in the script so you guys can play around with this if you wanna practice. And I'll just leave some of the stuff that was here. Let me put back the grade so that you guys have it uh, set up with the color correction. Cause this is uh, more commonly what I use it for, I would say is just color correcting different areas. Um, one downside again is that this card is, because it's scaling outward from the camera, um, it's not gonna be great if you're scaling a very flat, like wide ground, you know, for example, because this card is it's basically uh, sort of facing us. So it's that ca the card is always kind of facing the camera. It's not, it's not uh, let's say parallel to the ground. It's always kind of facing this direction, uh, which for a lot of, a lot of uh, purposes, it works really well. 
But if you're flying across the land, for example, you, that's a point where you probably would want to hop into 3D and use a, a normal card and a normal setup because, you know, for example, if we wanted to color correct this entire ground, we would want a 3D geometry, not this, not this method. So that's pretty much it. If you found this uh, useful, hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, I have more beginner content coming as well as intermediate and advanced uh, that's been in the works for quite some time. So uh, I'll have some more announcements on that in the next uh, month or month and a half, uh, I expect.